Welcome in to another episode of 345. I'm your boy L's the Truth, and we got an amazing show lined up for you guys today. This will be our season award edition. We're going to give you our predictions for rookie of the year, sixth woman, most improved, defensive player of the year, and MVP. After that, then we're going to give you our preseason power rankings, and we're going to close this thing out with some WNBA news. We got some signings, some trades, and some players that were waived and or released. And with that, let's get this thing started with who will win Rookie of the Year. And when I think about Rookie of the Year, I first think what player is going to have the ball in their hands the most? What player is going to get the most playing time? Who got the best players around them? Who's in the best situation? Who is your coach? All those things play a factor into who will win Rookie of the Year. The first few players that I'm going to cross off this list is J.C. Sheldon, Camila Cardoso, and Angel Reese. First off for J.C., She's playing on a team with dominant personalities, and I just don't think she's going to get enough shots to really compete for that award. Now, if she just come in with extreme confidence, take the starting job, and she's able to get maybe 10 to 12 shots a game, then she got a very strong possibility of doing that. But without Satu Sabli being there early in the season, I think this team is going to rely on Arike to do all of the playmaking and all the scoring. And I also think this is the year Tierra McGowan takes that extra step and starts being more of a go-to player for Dallas. JC, she still needs to beat out Veronica Burton for the starting spot. But if she don't, then she's going to be coming off the bench competing with Kalani Brown. And we got more on Kalani Brown later in the show, but they usually never play Kalani Brown and Tierra McGowan at the same time. To maximize both players, they kind of allow them to have a floor when they out there. That being said, if JC in the starting lineup, she's going to be competing for shots with Arike, Tierra McGowan, and if she's coming off the bench, then she's going to be competing with Kalani Brown. So we can go ahead and cancel her out. Then you got Angel Reese and Camila Cardoso. I think by them being on the same team, they're going to kind of split votes because they both going to need each other. So it's going to be kind of hard to evaluate which one is the go-to player because they both rookies. And I think that's going to be the same thing in L.A. Rakia Jackson and Cam Brink, they're going to steal votes from each other. So those four players we can all cancel out. Elisa Pilly, I'm still not sure what her role will be in Minnesota. I need to see a few games before I can really make a decision on what she'll be on that team. Because you got her, Diamond Miller, and Nafisa Callier. Three amazing players, don't get me wrong. But I just don't think they all fit together. And that leads me to the player who I think will win Rookie of the Year. I think it'll be between two players, Aaliyah Edwards and Caitlin Clark. Those players were drafted to teams where they're going to be go-to players and they're going to get a whole lot of shots. For one, Aaliyah Edwards, she in Washington and they just lost Elena Deladine, so she probably going to get to just develop and take as many shots as she want. Which leads me to my no-brainer Rookie of the Year pick, Caitlin Clark. Seeing how she performed in her first preseason game, she was letting that thing go. I'm so happy they put the ball in her hand and just let her do what she do with it. Please do not hamper this girl. Please do not stall her talent. Put the ball in her hand and let her do the same thing that she did at Iowa. If you want to play her crazy, then she going to just drop back for three or she going to drop it down to Nalissa, E. Weezy, or of course the colorful Aaliyah Boston. Not only will she win this award, she going to run away with it. Probably unanimous. But there you have my pick for Rookie of the Year. Now let's transition to who we think will win six women of the year and most improved. And I want to start by talking about the most improved player. Before I break down my pick, let's take a look at the last four players that won this award. Starting with Benai Jelani in 2020, she increased her point average from 5 to 17 and also made all defensive first team. Probably one of the biggest jumps we've ever seen in WNBA history. Then Brianna Jones in 2021. She increased her point average by three and saw a significant jump on the defensive end, which resulted in her also being named on a defensive second team and an all-star. Which takes us to 2022 when Jackie Young won the award. This one was a little weird to me. For me, number one picks in the draft should be excluded from winning this award because you're the number one pick in the draft. We already expect you to be good. I mean, I love the WNBA, but the voting system is crazy. Nevertheless, she increased her point average by four and was also selected to her first All-Star team. And let me just say before we move on to the next player, this is no slight at all to Jackie Young because she was this exactly at Notre Dame. 52% from the field, 45% from three. That's basically what she's doing in the WNBA. She just couldn't get it all going in her first year. But I saw it coming, so she shouldn't have won no Most Improved Award. They should have gave her some 
MVP votes or put her on a WNBA first team or second team or something like that. They need to probably make a WNBA third team. And if they don't, maybe I will. I'll give out the WNBA third team awards this coming season. But back to the MIP, Satu Saibali won it in 2023, increasing her point average by seven. She also saw a significant bump in assists, rebounds, made the all-star team, WNBA first team, and of course, most improved. Now y'all know I'm rocking with side two, but we got some news on her later in the show, so stay tuned for that. But for myself, I'm gonna have to do a favorite player power ranking because Skylar Diggins has been my favorite player for years and she came back and she looks so good out there. I don't know, it's kind of looking like 1A and 1B, but honestly, I love both players. I can't wait to have Satu back. Why can't both of my players be playing at the same time? But let's move on. Another one of my favorite players who I think will win most improved. I've been hyping her up all last year. I talked about her on maybe three or four podcasts, and that's no other than Baylor University alum, Dejanay Carrington. Dejanay finished second in six women of the year last year to Satu Sabali averaging eight points and three rebounds. Now, Connecticut, they didn't moved out into Tisha Heidemann. Tip Hayes retired. It's looking more and more like it's Dijanae's time. I didn't seen her playing in overseas leagues, putting up 30-point games, 25-point games. I know that ain't the WNBA, but I know she can do it in the WNBA because she just like that. It's in her DNA. Her daddy played eight seasons in the NFL. She's one of the faces of the league. She's all over social media. You got to put her in there and you got to give her a chance. Now let's talk about who will win Defensive Player of the Year and Sixth Woman of the Year. Let's start with Sixth Woman. This one is very difficult to predict because you never know what could happen in the season and the player could be sent into the starting lineup. But let's first take a look at the last four six Women of the Year, starting with De'Erica Hamby in 2020, Kelsey Plum, Brianna Jones. You see Brianna Jones won Most Improved and Six Woman of the Year. Then you got the beautiful, amazing sharpshooter Alicia Clark. To be honest, Alicia Clark might go back to back with this thing because in Vegas, they always got to double down on somebody and she always the one get left open. She hit about three, four threes a game and it's pretty much a wrap. Just think about how good this team must be. The Las Vegas Aces have the last four out of five, six women of the year. We've had a few players win it twice in a row. DeWanda Bonner being the only player that won it three times in a row from 2009 to 2011. But that brings me to who I think will win the sixth woman of the year, a player that's been screaming the breakout, Kalani Brown. She finished fourth in sixth woman of the year voting last year, averaging eight and four. I think her and T-Mac is just a perfect combination. I think she very well could be a starter on a lot of other teams. With the rookies that Dallas have on the team, I think Kalani Brown is going to have a bigger role coming in off the bench. But now let's talk about who's going to win defensive player of the year. Asia Wilson won this thing two straight times. That girl just playing on a whole nother level on both sides of the court. Now, no players ever won this award three straight times. There have been several players that won it two straight times. Tamika Ketchens won it five times. Sylvia Fowles won it four times. Cheryl Swoops being the only other player to win it three times. But with that little piece of history for you, who I think will win Defensive Player of the Year, coming to get this award for the third time, Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner had a really solid season, but she had way too much surrounding her. She definitely didn't play at the level that she was supposed to. I think Phoenix has retooled. I think if they can get back to being a winning team, she going to get back to blocking shots and she going to get her name back in this conversation. What was really sad is they ain't even put my girl on the all defensive team. Not the first one, not the second one. And that's only the third time that's happened in her career. Last year, her rookie year, and a couple years ago when she only played 12 games. There's no way you're keeping her off that all-defensive team this year. I can promise you that. But there you have it, my pick for Defensive Player of the Year. But I want to quickly say before my clock runs out, those of you who subscribe to PRNM, you know about the She Can Ball podcast. I need y'all help with something. Y'all know the She Can Ball podcast is not something that just drops every week. It really takes me a lot of time to put together all those highlights, so it's not something that I can really do every week like I can do this one. But one that I've been working on is the best defensive players of all time. I'm collecting a lot of footage for some of the best defensive plays, some of the best defensive players, and I just want y'all opinion on who do y'all think is the best defensive player to ever play in the WNBA. Give me some names, give us some ideas, because I don't want to leave nobody out. But now let's talk about who will win the WNBA's most valuable player. The MVP award generally goes to the best player in the league. 
I don't know what happened last year because the Aces had the best record. Asia won Defensive Player of the Year. For some reason, they just didn't vote her number one. And I honestly think a precedent is being set because there's not been any WNBA players that won this award two times in a row. Well, let me correct that. There was a player who won it two times in a row, Cynthia Cooper, in the WNBA's first two inaugural seasons. And I love Cynthia Cooper, definitely one of the pioneers of the game, but the talent in the league at that time was not where it is right now. And she was 34 years old, so she was already older and smarter than a lot of players in the league at that time. But never mind all that, we always gonna honor the history of the game. But for real, I think this award is gonna go to a first-time winner. With the New York Liberty losing Marine Johannes, I think they might take a slight step back. They also lost Stephanie Dolson, and they didn't really add any significant talent. So if Brianna Stewart can really take off like she did last year and get them to the number two seed, she probably can go back to back. But that's not my pick just yet, because that same thing applies to Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson probably could have won the last two or three. Asia Wilson won her first MVP award in 2020, and she probably could have won the last two. And y'all see how the Aces was going crazy about who didn't vote Asia as number one. So I know she going to hold a lot of that in, and she going to come out and try to take that award. So honestly, for me, it's Asia's award to lose. The team is amazing. She's amazing. So she probably is going to be number one in the MVP power rankings. And I went all around in the circle just to come back and say this. My pick for this year's most valuable player, we going down to Dallas and we going with Arike Agumbawale. I think Arike about to take her game to a whole nother level. I know she got to be sitting there thinking like, these MFers put me on the WNBA second team? I've been doing this here this whole time and y'all gonna put Satu on the first team over me? I don't know if it was me, my pride would be in the way. Ain't no way somebody come in and have one flash in the pan season and y'all already trying to say she better than me? Okay, watch this. If we just going off a of points average, Arike is already the third best scorer in WNBA history. She's already got a scoring title. She's becoming more of a playmaker. Last year, her defense was on a level that I ain't never even seen. She had a total of 69 steals, which is the most she's had since her senior season at Notre Dame. For me, that means she's getting used to the WNBA. The game is slowing down for her. She's able to make faster reads on both offense and defense. She also averaged four and a half assists, which is the most she's ever averaged on any level, college or pro. Arike is just so fun to watch. She's unconscious when she shoot the ball, almost like a Diana Taurasi. But Diana Taurasi do not got that crossover. She got that ball on the screen. And she is my pick for the 2024 WNBA MVP. Who do you think will win the award? Let us know in the comments. Now let's get into our preseason power rankings. Las Vegas, New York, Connecticut, Seattle, Dallas round out the top five. Until someone unseats Las Vegas, I'm going to have to keep them in that number one spot. New York Liberty still got Brianna Stewart, Sabrina Ionescu, Benajah Laney Hamilton, and John Quell Jones. With those four players alone, they should be able to finish with 30 plus wins. Connecticut Sun got a very nice mixture of veterans and young players, led by champion Dewana Bonner, Alyssa Thomas, Brianna Jones will be coming back. As of now, we got them at number three, but they very well could move ahead of New York, depending on how the season play out. Seattle, number four. I was kind of skeptical about this one at first because I didn't know how the three players was going to fit. But after seeing them in the preseason, they got Skyler playing point guard and Jewel Lloyd is just a primary scorer. NECA doing what she do. I think Seattle going to be a lot to deal with. Dallas Wings, also another team with a lot of mixture of veterans and young players. For them, it's all about continuing to get better and trying to stack wins on wins. The Phoenix Mercury added a whole lot of talent to their team. I think they still going to need some time before they can all get the chemistry and mesh together. Kalia Copper and Sophie Cunningham have been battling each other for the past few years, so I don't even know how that's going to work, to be honest. Atlanta Dream, really nice young team. I love Alicia Gray. I love Ryan Howard. They just picked up Jordan Canada, which is going to help them on the defensive end. I'm really loving that team right now. Things could really start clicking for Ryan Howard if she can really start taking over this league. As far as the Minnesota Lynx goes, I just think every team around the league is getting better and Minnesota is just running in the same place. They not adding no significant talent. I guess they just going to keep relying on the Fisa Callier, Diamond Miller, hopefully Elisa Pilly is half the player she was at Utah. LA Sparks, they really have no veterans, so I think they got a lot to prove. Indiana Fever, they have a lot of talent. They can definitely move up. They just need to show us that they can actually win. Chicago Sky, definitely going to be my favorite team. 
Angel Reese is just way too fun to watch. Camila Cardoso is so fun to watch. Marina Mabry. Dana Evans is finally getting her chance in the starting lineup. Although I got them at number 11, this could be a mistake because I don't like betting against Angel Reese. And lastly, but not least, the Washington Mystics, they lost their star player. I don't know how they're going to get wins, but hopefully I'm wrong about that one. But now quickly some WNBA news. The Atlanta Dream Wave, Elizabeth Balagoon, Taj Cole, A.D. Durr, Kalia Hillsman, Khadija Cave, the Dallas Wings Wave, Emma Cannon, Ashley Owusu, Katrina Party, the Las Vegas Aces Wave, Bria Beal, Morgan Jones, Bria Hartley, Kamara McDaniel, Angel Jackson, the Connecticut Sun Wave, Kiana Smith, Shea Petty, Leah Brown, Renia Davis, Tiana Jackson, Helena Poyo, the LA Sparks Wave, Varad Kiss, Taylor McSell, the Phoenix Mercury Wave, Desi Ray Young, the Minnesota Lynx Wave, Jamie Nared, Mimi Collins, Kiki Jefferson, Ruthie Hebert, Quenisha Lockett, the Seattle Storm Wave, Quay Miller, Elena Coates, Kayla Davis, the Indiana Fever Wave, Lalani Correa, Maya Caldwell, the Chicago Sky Wave, Taya Raymer, the Las Vegas Aces extend the contracts of Jackie Young and Chelsea Gray. They also pick up Emma Cannon off of waivers. The Washington Mystics picked up the player option for Shakira Austin. The Indiana Fever picked up the player option for Nalissa Smith and also Christy Wallace. The Dallas Wings trade Crystal Dangerfield to the Atlanta Dream for a 2025 third round draft pick. The Washington Mystics trade Bernadette Hattar and the 2025 second round pick to the Connecticut Sun for Queen Egbo. Injuries. Satu Sabali out four to six weeks with a shoulder injury. Camila Cardoso out four to six weeks with a shoulder injury. Brina Maxwell out three to four weeks with a knee injury. But there you have another episode of 345. Before I get out of here, I first want to just thank you guys for showing up on the community post. I forgot to share with you guys that Camila Cardoso actually liked one of our birthday pictures of her. So continue to say those happy birthdays. The girls are seeing our post and hopefully one day we can get to a spot where we can get them on the show. But the only way we can do that is if we keep promoting this game, keep promoting the league, keep promoting the girls, keep being respectful. But there you have it. Another show in the books. Thank you for everyone who listened and watched. I'm Elsa True for PR&M. Talk to you on the next one.